So in this video, I want to uh, discuss the classic physics problem of the damped force uh, harmonic oscillator. Um, the model problem is a mass hanging from a spring. Uh, if the mass is at rest, gravity balances the restoring spring force. And then if you uh, apply an external force to this mass, possibly um, electromagnetic force or some other force, you can get the mass to oscillate about its equilibrium position. And the equation governing the, the motion of the mass from equilibrium, which we call X, uh, contains a restoring force, which is uh, represented by K, the spring constant, uh, a damping force due to friction, represented by gamma, and then the external force, which has an amplitude, capital F, and a frequency, angular frequency, omega. And the equation F equals ma that you can derive is uh, mx double dot, that's ma, plus throwing all the terms that are, are linear in x on the left-hand side, uh, gamma x dot, that's the damping force, minus gamma x dot is the damping force plus kx minus kx is Hooke's law is the restoring force equals the inhomogeneous term which is the external force which is f times cosine omega t okay and that becomes the governing equation now if you uh, the solution of this inhomogeneous uh, equation then is a sum of the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution if you work out the uh, homogeneous solution, uh, what you'll find is that the, the real part of the roots of the characteristic equation are always negative, which means that the homogeneous solution always has a decaying exponential as one of the solutions, as a part of the solution. Um, so it goes to zero. So the homogeneous solution uh, goes to zero, okay, at long times, for long times. So what that means is that the general solution of the equation will turn out to be the non-decaying particular solution. Um, and uh, it will be independent of the initial conditions because the free constant in the general solution multiply the homogeneous solution and is used to satisfy the initial condition. So the long time solution goes to the uh, non-decaying particular solution and it's uh, independent of the initial conditions, okay? So that's an important feature of a uh, damped oscillator. So let's find this uh, particular solution. So I will uh, use uh, complex variables to do that. So I will write the equation for z uh, converting to uh, z equals x plus i y and then if x is the real part of z, I can write cosine omega t as the um, real part of e to the i omega t, so the right hand side becomes an exponential, right? So here x is equal to the real part of z. So that allows me to use uh, exponential ansatz to solve this for the particular solution. So I can try z equals some complex constant c times e to the i omega t. Substitute in, uh, z double dot will bring down an i omega squared, which is a minus omega squared. So we have a um, minus m omega squared times c plus, and I'm canceling the e to the i omega t, 
So plus gamma times z dot, z dot brings I down in I omega, plus I omega gamma c, plus kz, plus k uh, c equals the right hand side, which is f. So we can solve this. So c is equal to f over the real part. Uh, is k minus m omega squared plus i omega gamma. And it's convenient if we divide numerator and denominator by m. So f over m over k over m minus omega squared plus i omega gamma over m. Okay? So um, k over m is actually the angular frequency of the undamped, gamma equals zero, unforced harmonic oscillator. So that's x double dot plus k over m x equals zero. So k over m is this omega naught squared, the square of the angular frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator. So it's useful to uh, define omega naught squared then is k over m. So while we do that we might as well define capital gamma to be this imaginary part omega gamma over m and we can define little f to be capital F over m. Okay. So with those definitions then, um, C becomes um, little f over omega naught squared minus omega squared plus i times gamma, right? And um, we can write that as a complex number a plus ib if we multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So we have an f times uh, omega naught squared minus omega squared minus i gamma over the uh, modulus squared of the denominator. So omega naught squared minus omega squared squared plus gamma squared. Okay? <coughs> um, so our particular solution is going to the, be the real part of the z, which is the real part of c times e to the i omega t, right? And uh, we would like to express the particular solution as an amplitude times a cosine omega t plus a phase. So that's a very physical representation of the solution. We want to know the uh, amplitude of the oscillation and we want to know the phase with respect to the forcing term. So to do that, we need to use the uh, polar form of a complex number. So recall that x plus i y can be written as r times e to the i phi, where r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, and the tangent of phi is equal to y over x. Okay. So we'll use that for c. So in order to use that for C, we need to write the uh, complex number in C uh, in, in polar form, which is going to be uh, omega naught squared minus omega squared minus I gamma. We write that as uh, the square root of omega naught squared minus omega squared squared plus gamma squared times
times e to the i phi, where the tangent of phi equals the y is gamma minus gamma over x, omega naught squared minus omega squared. So we can write that as gamma over omega squared minus omega naught squared. So that's the phase. So now when we put that together, so uh, we have our C and we have our XP. So then we put it together so that XP is equal to the real part of C. So uh, C here is F times this complex number. So it's the real part of f times the square root of omega naught squared minus omega squared plus gamma squared times e to the i phi. So we're writing c. That's f times this one. And then we still have the denominator here. So we add the denominator divided by omega naught squared minus omega squared. Uh, sorry, this should be squared here. Squared plus gamma squared. So this is our polar representation of C times e to the i omega t. And then uh, we can take the real part. So we have an e to the i omega t plus phi. So the real part is cosine omega t plus phi. And we can cancel the square root in the numerator against the denominator. So we end up with f over the square root of omega naught squared minus omega squared squared plus gamma squared canceling, and then we have a cosine omega t plus phi. And that's the form of the particular solution. So the final oscillation of the mass under an external force has an amplitude here, right? So it has an amplitude uh, which depends on the frequency of the force, external force, and the damping coefficient. And it has a phase, phi. So we've calculated what the phase is. We've calculated what the amplitude is. Um, in a physics class, then, you, you look at uh, what are the implications of uh, forcing a uh, damped uh, oscillator, uh, what frequency should you force it at to have maximum amplitude, and what, how does the phase of the motion shift uh, with respect to the force. So uh, I will end here.